Welcome back everybody, Big Mess, Mess of Branch Outdoors. And today I'm going to be tying for you one of my favorite spring um, patterns. It is a, geez, it doesn't really have a name. It's, it's similar to a Quill Gordon, um, a rapid end style fly. It's a giant yellow mayfly that I like to fish that's very effective here in the mountains of Western North Carolina. You can take these techniques and adapt them to any of the mayflies that you're tying, especially if you're using calf tail, calf body. So without any further ado, let's jump into this thing and let's tie one of these guys up, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a size 12. It's a TMC 100. I'm going to put that here into my Norvice standard jaw, my Norvice fly tying system, Liberty Blue, for those of you folks who are wondering. And be sure to check down below. There will be a link to the Norvice fly tying system if you are interested in that and have any questions. There you go. With that being said, I'm going to take some Semperfly 12 Alt yellow thread. I'm going to get that started here on my hook shank. I want to take time to thank everybody who watched the last video. And if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Then if you're uh, just a local who comes back and visits with us all the time and you're part of the Messer Branch Outdoors family, we want to thank you as well. We had folks reached out to us from the Netherlands, the South Wales, UK, uh, Michigan, uh, East Over, North Carolina, Delaware. So a lot of you folks out there responding back where you're watching from and thank you, thank you, thank you very much and great response to the last video. But I do have to ask you folks a favor. I'm not talking about subscribing. We want you to do that. And that link is going to be down at the, at the, you know, the corner of your screen right there. Just hit that subscribe button and join the Messer Branch Outdoors family. But before I get started on these wings, and don't leave me yet, one of our family members, and I'm talking like uh, personal family members, but one of our Messer Branch Outdoors subscribers is going through a uh, medical situation right now. And uh, if y'all could take time to pray for this individual, um, you know, God knows who they are. If you could do that, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. With that being said, let's jump in here. The next material we're going to use is going to be some calf tail. I thought I had some calf body in yellow, but I don't. And as you can see, I have really picked through this thing quite a bit here. Now, I personally like, you know, tying, you know, down here with these sections on the bottom. Uh, but this has been picked through quite a bit. There actually might be some enough material for me to use that right there. That gets out black. So I'm actually going to call an audible here right quick. Um, so I'm going to discard that. I do have a hair stacker. There's different sizes of hair stackers. Then there's different types of hair stackers. I have, oh geez, a bunch of different ones. But I want to take my scissors, my Dr. Slick scissors, and I'm going to reach down in here and I'm just going to grab me a clump of that calf tail, otherwise known as kip tail as well. You'll find that out there. And I'm going to pull... I'm going to hold the tips and I'm going to get some of that uh, fluff out of the butt sections, okay? Just like so. There's going to be a lot that you discard, all right? So you can see what I got right there. So I want to put that into my hair stacker tips first. You want to go down with that if you've never used this type of material. Then I'm going to take it off. I'm stacking that. Try not to shake the camera for you folks. And little Jill, the belly scratcher over there, surely woke her up on her dog bed. I hated to disturb Jill, but uh, she got woken up by that. Now I've got the tips stacked the way that I want to. We're going to form us up our wings. So I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise, just like so. And I'm going to make a loose wrap, another loose wrap. I want to look at that, kind of stand it up there momentarily see what I think. Maybe one more wrap. I'm okay with that. I want to take up the tension of my thread and my bobbin and I'm going to start winding back. And what this is going to do, this is going to allow me to build a taper. So I'm going to come in with my scissors and go at a downward angle just like so. Got one straggler. We're going to tie down those butt ends just like that and we have created a taper on this fly. Now, one of the things you'll notice in this Norvice is I can spin this here in many different directions, and I like to have that ability. Probably crowded the eye of this here just a smidge, to be honest with you. So what that means, and this is a great learning uh, time for you folks there, is I should have went back further with this wing, but I'll have to have more hackle wraps behind here instead of on the front, but that's okay. Not a problem, not the end of the world. I'm teaching you technique, 
and you do you, and that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna clean it up just a smidge. Oh, part of my problem is I got the wrong glasses on. My bad. Y'all have issues like that? If do, let me let me know down in the comment sections. Holy cow, I can see so much better. So I'm gonna spread these fibers apart here, kind of a natural spread. And we're gonna do a little bit of figure eight action. Gonna come into your living room or wherever you're viewing from here right quick. Boom, boom. Now we're gonna be cooking with gas there momentarily. There we go. Very nice, very nice. Boy, the channel is growing and it's thanks to viewers just like you. I got into this, um, you know, showing those wings last week to you folks. Um, and it just, you know, dry fly season is not really far off for us here in the mountains of Western North Carolina. And when we get into the evening times, this is a fly that can fish very, very well for us. So the next material I'm gonna do is I'm going to take basically a hackle, it's been dyed, it's been dyed a um, golden olive. You can see right here, golden olive. And that's the colors we're gonna use and we're gonna have this tail. So I'm gonna take some of those hackle fibers and you could use, uh, if you wanted to, actually you could use the, uh, the tail material, uh, the, uh, excuse me, I apologize for that. I had a good supper, had fajitas, but you could use uh, Coke de Leon if you wanted to, uh, all kinds of different materials in there you could use for your, your tail, that's entirely up to you. Something else you can use, uh, to be honest with you, is some makeup fibers off of uh, makeup brushes. When I say makeup fibers, you don't have fibers from makeup, but you have the makeup brushes. Okay, so I have a little bit, I wanna fill in this little area here, kind of smooth it out a little bit. There we go. That underbody's looking good, that's what's important. So the next material we're gonna use is some dubbing. This is Fly Right Dubbing. It's number 34. It's Quill Gordon Brown Drake Olive. They don't make this anymore, unfortunately. It's a poly dubbing, it floats exceptionally well. Sometimes you can pick this up on eBay. It's really fine. So if you can find some of it, it's really great stuff to fish with. This fly works exceptionally, exceptionally well in the spring. So you should give it a try. When you start to think about March Browns, Quill Gordons, things of that nature, this is really when this fly stands out. The other Thing I can tell you about this particular fly pattern that I've been fishing for oh geez 30 some years is that in the evening time when you get those dusky evening time hours this fly will almost glow on the water making it real easy to see and now that I've got a little bit more age on my eyeballs that's super important to have that aiding me in watching my fly, also making sure that my fly has landed where I wanted it to land um, when I present this fly to the trout out there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this up right in here because I'm gonna put my hackle on top of it. So at this point, we are almost done with this particular fly. As you can see, it's super easy to tie. Now I'm gonna take my golden olive dyed whiting feather as you can see here i'm just going to use one in this particular case i want to come in here i want to lay the shiny side facing you if you remember watching the couple of the previous videos from a few weeks ago if you haven't done that be sure to go back and watch it under the um, the fly time videos link for instructions on preparing hackle feathers for tying i was answering one of our viewers questions then that's how we kind of got off on the series we did last week. Now I'm just going to add just a smidge more dubbing for that to sit on there just a little bit, not much. Then we will be through. If you find this content valuable, hey, be sure to leave us a comment or even better, hit that subscribe button. We are excited about two things here in North Carolina. We're excited about you know, the weather's starting to get a little bit more consistent for the fishing, so watch for some fishing videos coming. Plus, we're about two weeks away from turkey season opening up here for the youth. 
you heard me right, turkey season. We like to turkey hunt. Not only do you get to use the feathers for tying flies, but uh, I tell you, the turkey meat is great to eat. All right, so this here is a sized appropriate feather for this particular hook, and that's something you have to do. As you see, by me using my finger here, I am able to rotate this Norvice one-handed, and I'm able to guide my hackle feather appropriately, making sure that I get those really nice side-by-side -side wraps. I wanna come maybe one more wrap right there. I'm gonna bring my thread off of the bobbin holder cradle. I'm gonna make some wraps there, a wrap or two in front, and one more wrap behind. Then I'm gonna do a half hitch, and I will use a half hitch tool in this particular case. I'm just gonna slide that in that particular position right there. If you made it with me this far, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We wanna salute all of our veterans, those actively serving, those who have previously served, all of our first responders, all of our heroes out there. We thank you very, very much. Um, now at this point here, I wanna take my whip finish tool. I'm gonna to come in here and I'm just gonna do a whip finish. I'm gonna do two of these, okay? And the reason why I wanna do two is called redundancy, folks, redundancy. Now, if you notice right there, we have a very clean eye, which is super important because if you can't get that tippet through the eye of your hook, guess what? You can't fish this fly. So my thought to you is I challenge you to go tie a fly like this. If you've done so, maybe you picked up a technique that will help you tie a little bit better fly. If not, it's not that hard, folks. Just go out there and give it a shot. If you have any questions, you can comment down below in the comment sections or you can shoot us an email in the link down below. We thank you very much. We appreciate you watching and we look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, y'all catch a little, lot of fish and we'll see you. Bye now.